Welcome everyone to the first ever Silicon Valley Meetup virtual reunion. Yeah. It is an experiment, so we haven't done this before. So let's see how it goes. Um, and to start with, um, just wanted to share a little video that we captured, um, you know, during the 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 meetup. So let me go to that and try to do this video. Okay. Here we go. And I have to say that after the uh, after the meetup, it was a little bit like surreal to, you know, I don't know why this this is not playing. It played when we tried it. Okay, here we go. Leticia, we can't hear you. Okay, can you hear me now, Ilya? Yes, yes, you're back. Yeah, I think that after you play a video, it just like mutes you, but anyway. So have like almost 60 fellows from 37 institutions all the way from Idaho to Virgin Islands so pretty amazing um, and we have our team here we have our trusted some of our trusted collaborators um, and the fabs who helped us some uh, most of them who helped us uh, run the event um, so what uh, we have asked them to do is to say hi and share one favorite moment from the meetup and use an image from the album that uh, Lori uh, very with a, a lot of love put together and help from Ryan and uh, Alex yes um, so we're gonna go and, and through the favorite moments of some of, of, of the people who were in charge of or were you know putting together the, the meetup so let's share some memories um, so here's one of my favorite moments. I had a lot, many of them, but the, the on conference certainly is one of my favorite moments because it's, you know, we put a lot of attention and in all the details so that you have the best experience possible. Um, I'm not sharing my screen, no. I am? No? Okay, so I need to share my screen. Great. Uh, this is how technology. Okay, let me share my screen. Um, desktop, sharing to desktop. Okay, I should be sharing now. Yep. Okay, so here, here is one of my favorite moments uh, from the meetup is the on conference. Um, and it's because that's the moment where, you know, it's really about you and what you care about and all of the issues that are important for you surface. Uh, and this was Destiny Bond from Morgan State. And like in the middle of the on conference, she said, like, well, you know, I have something that came up that I'd like to discuss, but there's no boards available, there's no easels. And I said like, well, you know, be creative, do something. And she kind of like, you know, started a, like a walking 
uh, board and walked around and gathered people and engaged them in conversation. So this was one of my favorite moments. Next up, we have Humera. Humera, do you want to share your your favorite moment? Hi, yes. Um, well, this moment was um, my favorite because it was the calm before the storm. Um, we had spent maybe 24, 48 hours doing a lot of work, getting ready for the big party, the 300 fellows to arrive, and we just took a moment to just be uh, meditative and mindful and just relax and enjoy our newly created space at the B-School. So I love that, and I love getting to know the fabs that we selected this year that much better through the whole experience. So this exemplifies that. Cool. Next up, we have Katie. Katie, <laughs> tell us about it. Yes, this, this is my favorite. It just brings such a smile to my face, mostly just because that's it. There's like not really a reason, but also really because it reminds me of the enthusiasm of everybody that was there, that was there participating, and the openness that just comes along um, with connecting to this community of, of fellows. So thanks, Alan Shaw, for such a wonderful, wonderful photo. He's on the call, I think. <laughs> Next up, we have Stacey. Hi. Yeah, Stacey. this is my fave um, just because it was quite a teamwork day and loved working with the team. And I loved seeing the transformation of all of you guys and how the weekend went for everybody. Cool. Thank you, Stacey. Now we have Lori. Um, I love this photo. I think uh, I think Nada's on the call from Lawrence Tech. This was a moment that um, um, Peter Sims said, I'm going to hook you up with the uh, owners of Goldie Blocks to see if we can get you an internship. And I just love how excited she is in this picture. And I think it exemplifies uh, all the different types of connections that uh, we all got at the meetup, like just person to person, personal connections, friendships, collaborations. Um, and I just, I really love that. I loved hearing how excited she was in the mic when she was talking. So cool. love you, Nada. <laughs> Now we have Frederick. Tell us about yes, I, I, I chose this one. I think that beautifully represents kind of like the energy which was unleashed throughout the whole day. Um, and actually, instead of competing against each other, I think we shifted their mindsets to kind of like really supporting each other and become each other's biggest champions and fans, uh, which I think is an important mindset to have. So um, I think that picture beautifully represents that. Mm -hmm. And we have David, and I, I picked this photo from, for you, but um, <laughs> the, what, what did you like about the meetup? And, like, the so, um, yeah, the, the part that uh, struck me was watching all of you in the uh, role play uh, and watching as I circulated all, this, all of the students, all the participants, uh, making the shift, uh, I'm going to go philosophical here, that uh, Martin Buber calls the shift from I and I to I and thou, which means starting a negotiation with the idea of, here's my idea, presenting the idea, this is a great idea, you should like it, to, oh, I got to apply empathy, understand what you want, sync what you want up with my idea and then it goes then we get to I and thou where we're working as a we instead of two individuals it becomes a one and when you go from two to one you get things done that was it was evident in virtually every group I looked at that was my takeaway great thank you um, so for the rest of the session we're going to get some more memories a little bit uh, but we're also going to hear about the stories that we had an open call for um, stories of uh, things that are happening at your campuses already. Some of you have just finished the training, came to a meetup, and you're on to amazing stuff already. It's like three weeks in, um, and you have some questions as well. Um, so we want to uh, like provide answers uh, to those questions uh, as well. Um, so with that, um, I pass the baton to Katie. <laughs> um, I'll go ahead and thank Ryan right now for that photo. Um, but thank you, Leticia. Uh, so you just heard the, some of the team's favorite moments. Um, and we've asked also the fabs that are on the call um, to also choose their favorite moment and a picture that goes along with it. So fabs, when you see uh, the photo that you submitted to Leticia, please just unmute yourselves and in about 30 seconds, share your favorite moment with the group today. Cool. And first up is... 
Alan. Alan, are you there? You might be muted or you're not there. It's a pretty cool photo. Alan is there and muted. Okay. Alan, can you unmute yourself? You might not be able. So let's, we can cycle back to that one. Yep. He might be having like technical yeah. issues. Let's go to Adrian. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Yes. All right, great. So personally, I really love this moment. And uh, I love the way Laurie called it the leadership move. It's really amazing when you can learn how to become not only a good follower, but also become an active leader. I really love this moment. It really burnt a lot of emotions. I love it too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's everybody. Thank you. Yay. Thank you. Hey, hi, everyone. Hey. <laughs> I'm Can we replicate that? <laughs> 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 okay, thank you so much, guys. Uh, next up is Megan. Yeah, so my photo is a picture of Stacy and I riding a bike through Google, and um, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> we kind of just like took a break and um, we rode around and taking selfies <laughs> while riding bikes. Um, it was a blast. Um, and it was really cool to just like get to know Stacy because at first she was just a name on an email. <laughs> and so um, now I like actually got to know who she was. And so it was a lot of fun. Great, impressive skills of like biking and taking selfies at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, uh, okay. Leticia, also Alan's, Alan's audio is working. I don't know if you want to cycle back before we get too far. Alan, Alan, go ahead. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yes, yes. like really, um, yes. Uh, soft, okay. but yes. Um, all right, so I, uh, well, I went through all the photos and honestly, I couldn't place like a specific, I guess, moment that I, really loved because i loved like basically all of it but i guess this photo i picked um was more symbolic uh with the the amount of ideas that was shared um and the amount of connections that were made uh during the event for me great thank you alan uh and now mm -hmm. we're fast forwarding to chris chris hey uh yeah i think this photo was <laughs> this was while we were still setting up for the event. So it was kind of like um, a last minute, like I uh, still had so much to do. We're trying to like get done so we could get to bed and start early the next morning or uh, maybe it was get to registration. I forget what it was, but um, I think this really just encompassed like there was a small level of craziness uh, to all of us uh, that were helping to run this event, but it was uh, it was that craziness that helped to keep things exciting and fun. And um, that's what got us through the event. So I thought Tim's face really kind of embodied that. <laughs> And he's great at making faces as Lori is. Um, yeah, definitely. And, so Brad, uh, tell us about this moment, which is the same uh, that Lori selected, but let's hear your perspective. Yeah, so uh, yeah, same photo as Lori, but I was sitting like in the front row of this like talk, right? And just kind of sitting there drained from the day. It was getting late and I was just like ready to fall asleep. And all of a sudden, it was like this extreme level of excitement just came on stage, like this just bubble bursting with energy. And it was like, I felt like I was at Disney World, like dreams were coming true. And like, I didn't know, it was just so insane. Um, so I absolutely loved it. And like, every time I talked to Megan all the time about the meetup and just like, do you remember like when she got on stage and just, I talked to Ryan about it while I was there. And I, I don't think I would have given the microphone away to just like some random person in the crowd, but like, I'm so glad that he did. And I'm sure that like lives have been changed because of that moment, because I know my head. Nice. That's great. It's like opera. It's like, look under your <laughs> chair. There's a car. <laughs> okay, Katie, to you. All right. Um, thanks, guys, for sharing. Um, but, you know, so these are just a few moments that were captured by a small fraction of the over 300 people that joined us at that meetup. Um, and we want to hear and see all of your favorite moments, too. So what we want to encourage you to do right now is to either pick 
um, a photo from one of the Flickr albums that uh, Lori has posted, or it could be one that you took on your own and share it either to the Facebook group or on Twitter and Instagram with the UI fellows and saying why that picture um, depicted your favorite moment. And now I will pass it on to Humera. Yeah. And by right now, you mean right after the call, right? Yes, by right now, I mean actually yeah, right in 45 now, minutes I mean, right after the call. Minutes, right after this. Great. Okay. All right. Everyone, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, I'm, I'm. Humera, we love that, you. Like, move this on the fly. And uh, for a moment, you'll just have to. Um, we just have to like bring it make into two it. Both Katie and I on one screen. Okay, great. Thanks, Katie. You're welcome. All right. All right. So, so what we we've, we've asked, asked fellows. Can you, uh, let's see. Can, can, you, can you turn, turn your audio off? off? I'm hearing an echo. Great. Okay, I think that's going to work. So we asked fellows, what um, what kinds of things have they done um, since you've been back? I mean, it's been about a month, and it's been amazing the firestorm of activity that we've seen on Facebook and on uh, Slack about the kinds of projects you're undertaking, the conversations you're having, and so we we put it out to you guys to say, hey, who has an interesting story or anecdote to report on? for this virtual meetup. And we heard from a bunch of you, so we're gonna call on you to share your quick anecdote, as well as share the question that you have for the group. Um, and we're going to use Poll Everywhere to get answers from this group um, to your questions. And I'm also going to tap a few uh, fellows that I have some great uh, suggestions and answers for you as well. So let's start from the top with Sahar from New Mexico State. Sahar, are you there? Can you take yourself off mute? Um, tell us your anecdote and pose your question. Okay, hello everyone. Can anybody hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, a uh, couple of weeks after the meetup, uh, we met with our faculty sponsors here at NMS and we discussed uh, our story at the meetup and what we have learned, our experiences, and what we want to do with the UIF that we have, with the UIF fellows uh, at New Mexico State University. And uh, I guess uh, one of the most uh, specific uh, concerns that we both, I mean, uh, by we, we, I mean the UIF and also the uh, faculty sponsored had was the uh, sustainability of the program. Our faculty sponsors are not uh, sure if we want to have another uh, fellow cohort uh, for the next fall, and uh, we discussed it uh, with the faculties, and they asked us if we need to continue the program at NMSU or not. And I really and um, strongly agree to continue it at NMSU because we need more flows to be involved in the program and uh, some of the fellow, current fellows are graduating. And uh, I had this talk, uh, and I mean this concern on the on conference uh, at the Microsoft as well, that what should we do with the graduation? And I guess my question is that uh, how we can make the program more sustainable at different universities and uh, continue to have more cohorts of uh, students that are interesting to somehow uh, uh, develop their university in terms of innovation and entrepreneurship. Thanks. Thank you, Sahar. Yeah, and it's a, it's a great question, and it's one that uh, a lot of our campuses uh, think about a lot. Um, the, the key thing that a lot of fellows have found is that um, in order to sort of like pay it forward and ensure that um, 
uh, that, that this program continues at your campus for the worthy cause of expanding your innovation and entrepreneurship ecosystem, that it's absolutely, absolutely essential that each and every one of you is thinking about creating lasting institutional change. Uh, not just like the kind of like, uh, you know, it, it's great to have uh, an event or a workshop or a course and that's, you know, uh, but to think about the kinds of things that will stick even beyond after your graduation. Um, and uh, that's the kind of value that faculty and, and institutions are seeking to derive from the investment in you all going through the program. So that's that's the kind of um, thing that will really help ensure uh, program sustainability. So um, I, I think that that is really sort of the key thing. Um, and I have every confidence that your team at NMSU this year is really going to help uh, sort of realize that vision. Another key uh, part of this is ensuring that um, you're bringing fellows from a younger and in, in younger age, sophomores and, and uh, juniors, possibly even first years, so that they have the long runway in order to make an impact. If you're bringing on a senior as a university innovation fellow and they're just graduating in six months, it's, it's, it's a lot harder to make that impact. And some great answers coming in from Poll Everywhere as well. Thank you guys for contributing to that. Um, so next we're gonna move to Nada at uh, Lawrence Tech. Um, Nada, are you there? Yeah, hello, everybody. Thank you for all the support, by the way. <laughs> um, yeah, I your, actually your, thought I... Your moment, your moment on stage was a lot of people's most favorite moment, Nada, so thank <laughs> you. Uh, that means so much. And just the outpour of support just has changed my life. So I love you all. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so I, I actually thought I attached um, an image of our Girl Scout event at Lawrence Tech. Um, but so at Lawrence Tech, um, after we came back, we talked to our sponsors and we really got feedback from everybody. And um, a lot of people at Lawrence Tech didn't know that we came, like we went to California until it was published in a news article. And so um, they, they all wanted to hear about our trip, all the students at Lawrence Tech. And so it was really exciting to come back and tell them all the amazing things we did. Um, and we actually had our first meeting today and it was very successful. We had a room full of people um, about 30 people came and we actually had people stay after and just talk and have different discussions. Um, I was having discussion with someone about education and how um, it really needs to improve. So we even had sponsors. Um, Justin met a bunch of um, company sponsors um, and he invited them at, to our meeting and um, they attended and it was, it was such a great interaction. We had them do two different innovation exercises as well. Um, and so it was great to see all that interaction and like after a month of not doing anything, um, like coming back and just really working hard on getting this meeting set up, um, seeing that all come into sight was just amazing. So thank you. <laughs> and you had a, a great uh, question that you posed um, about, uh, let's see, about um, how introducing i &E to students without uh, uh, overwhelming them, so connecting it uh, to, um, you know, how, how do you how do you serve it up without without yeah. it being an overwhelming additional thing that they have to do in college? Um, and, uh, this is something that comes up often, and the the um, it, it, I think it's something that the faculty um, uh, could answer well for you. And I'm going to connect you to some uh, people in our network who have done this. Um, and and fellows, if you have suggestions, please comment. But Co-curricular opportunities are really great uh, sources. Um, so if a faculty member is giving a student course credit for attending a hackathon or uh, participating in a three-day startup or something of that nature and encouraging that kind of activity outside of class, um, that's, that's really another way short of, of course, you know, having it be a part of the coursework. Um, and of course, make the workshop fun. Um, as our fellows say, um, see some awesome answers coming in here. Keep it simple, connected to learning in class. All great answers. Thank you, Nada. Thank you. Um, I actually also wanted to say, so during our meeting, um, after we did the activities, um, one of the students raised their hand and asked us if we got those activities correct because it was meant to trick them. Um, and so I didn't even realize that they 
thought that we knew how to do those activities and that we like, you know, so that as well, I think, um, is something good to keep in mind. Ambiguity is very ambiguous. Audio. That's great. And uh, if I may add, like for me, when I teach creativity, um, getting people and, and Frederick and I teach together, a class together, and like I say that one of our uh, learning objectives is that throughout the quarter, people become comfortable with ambiguity, with not being told exactly what they need to do. And at the beginning, when we give them like challenges that are a little bit ambiguous, they become very uncomfortable. And then, you know, throughout the quarter, they see the value. And at the end, they're com totally comfortable. But this is something that you have to discuss and make part of the conversation that, that in the world, you're not going to get a script every day. And you need to be comfortable with ambiguity. And that's a really, really great uh, goal to, to go for. Thank you. Great point. Samara, can I jump in quickly regarding poll Thank everywhere? Please. Even if you don't want to add uh, your own comment, you can still vote. So you can just yeah. go to poll.com slash UI fellows and vote, even if you don't want to enter your own response. Yeah. Thank you, so Lori. Yep. Yeah. Cool. We had a great anecdote submitted by Tad Davis. Tad, are you on the line? I think we. He was seen a moment ago, Tad. Tad is there. We see his name. He he seems to not like to be muted. Well, I'm going. Uh, should we move on and then we come back to him? Yeah, let's. He, okay. Um, yeah, he's having some issues with his connection. We'll come back to him. So, um, Mark Boucher at Case Western Reserve, uh, a make a part of the Make Schools Alliance. So, Mark, I'm especially interested to hear about how things have gone on your campus. Yeah. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Awesome. Um, so something that I think we had a similar experience to many people where we came back to campus, met with our um, with our sponsors and had a really good discussion about our takeaways and um, kind of what we yeah, what we got out of uh, coming to Stanford and doing the UIF kind of weekend. For us, what that turned into was working with our sponsors to um, actually get a funded 10 week summer program in our innovation space. Um, so it's going to be provided to, um, I think, around eight to ten students. Um, and then it's on our cohort to develop the programming and the curriculum for this 10-week program. And we're working in partnership with um, a, a kind of a local industry partner who has kind of a big, uh, more design-focused, how can we question, um, and it's going to be how can we make America radically happier. Um, so kind of having students workshop that idea in our makerspace and then using uh, some design thinking curriculum around it to help them form uh, form kind of innovative solutions to that. Um, and what's really cool is this industry partner agreed to pay students to stay, so it's kind of a summer job, so it's a win-win all around. Okay. Um, so my awesome. question, yeah, my question off of that is, uh, what is what are some good resources for curriculum? like? I've I've done some curriculum building, but nothing for like ten weeks and starting from scratch. Um, so I'm looking for resources here. Awesome. You know, for to answer your question, we were going to tap Chris Ashley. Um, Chris and his team, including um, Timothy Moore, have uh, developed a suite of different things. Chris, are you there? Yep, I'm here. Chris, yeah. So tell us about how you'd answer this. Yeah, I think um, really what we've done and, and kind of what we've seen with all the initiatives we put on the ground, the first iteration of them, we've tried to get as much feedback as possible. And so, uh, A, it already helps that it's coming from students. Um, so I think a lot of times when you see stuff that isn't engaging, it's because there's some type of disconnect between what the customers, uh, for example, the students, and what the, uh, I guess, the faculty or the people that are planning it have in mind of what would be like beneficial. Um, so that's that's already a help to help things engage. But um, really, we try to stay light on our feet and be able to like pivot as things go on. So for example, I think what Humera is referencing is pop-up courses that we've been running all year long. And um, they started out with three and four people coming and five and six. And now we have a wait list of over 300 people um, for certain courses that we run on a weekly basis. And so what we've been able to do is we only plan the pop-up courses a couple of weeks out. Uh, and that gives us 
the opportunity to adjust and figure out what the demand is, what students are really interested in, and then uh, cater to what would be engaging to the students. So I think it's really just being light on your feet, you know, taking some market research and learning as you go and being willing to change and accept that, you know, maybe your initial plan isn't actually going to be the very best plan that uh, you ultimately side with by the end of things. Yeah, and if I can add to that, I would say, you know, the resource that we gave you to think about designing pop-up classes and kind of like the building blocks, you know, remember that like handout that now is in the resource page with the Lego blocks. Uh, think about all of those details and reflect back on like the meetup experience, right? What was engaging for you and for other students, right? Like, and think about like space, what was the pace, what was you know what kinds of exercises we did like perhaps like think about like short exercises that dan showed you in, like improv yeah. exercises yeah. that get people in the right mindset and like and really think about the whole journey of the eight weeks right and like and start by the looking at the end goal and say what did success look like and someone said it right there beautifully start with what the students should look like or act when they get out what do you want to get out and then think about the whole experience and then go like into the details, right? And think about space, think about, and challenge assumptions. Does it have to be in the classroom? Can we do the class all like, you know, outside? Like think about all of those details and use the process of like ideation. And, and as Chris said, like prototype and kind of like come up with like the sketch and get feedback and then, you know, go from there. Right, for uh, sure. Yeah, very cool. I appreciate the feedback. And I think something that we're kind of trying to keep in mind is that all the students that we're taking on for this program, one of the base requirements is they got to be kind of ready to fly by the seat of their pants with us a little bit because it is the first iteration. So hopefully we're setting some expectations, but um, I appreciate all the feedback. This is going to be cool. Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. Great. Going nice work, Mark. Thanks. Yeah. The, the early adopters is a great, you know, yeah. way, right? Like you, you know, build engagement and then others will follow. Sweet. Awesome. Okay. So I think we have Tad Davis back and I, um, especially because South Plains College is our first community college pilot at South Plains. Um, yeah, thanks. <laughs> uh, yeah, so my, uh, uh, my big project right now, um, we just got our first student entrepreneur club kicked off. Uh, we're going strong with four members, so super excited about that. But we're hoping that uh, the unconference that we're going to be hosting tomorrow uh, is going to change that and we'll get uh, a lot more students uh, involved. Um, so essentially the unconference is going to be just like we had at the meetup. Um, you know, my faculty sponsor uh, was super supportive of the idea, just really uh, gung-ho about it. Um, and uh, so we're going to set up in a heavily trafficked area uh, and just, uh, you know, I've been <laughs> trying to market it to uh, all the classes I can uh, just over the past couple of weeks because it's been kind of, you know, uh, fast-paced. Um, so we're hoping for a good turnout. Um, and then... Uh, yeah, so I've been talking with the student government, uh, and so I've got them involved now. So uh, it is slowly growing. Um, so I'm just super excited about this. Um, I love then, it, Ted. Nice work. Yeah, thank you. So I guess uh, the question that I had, do I have a question? Where, I'm yes. sorry. I missed something earlier. Yeah. <laughs> not seeing anything so here. Uh, Ah, there we and go. And I'm just going to up right now. It was yeah. about UI. Um, oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. And so, actually, yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. Go ahead. Post what were you saying? Well, what I was going to say, I was just going to provide a little bit of UI fresh context. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. what we didn't mention yet is that uh, we are here at Howard University in Washington, D.C., because of the White House Science Fair tomorrow where we get to announce that a bunch of additional campuses, now 28 campuses, uh, are uh, part of the UI Fresh initiative, up from 10 when we launched this initiative at the White House Science Fair last year. Um, so mm -hmm. uh, a lot of that is testament to the fellows who returned back from the meetup and went out and got those signatures. So 
amazing job, fellows, who, who got that done. It wasn't easy, and your question, I think, points to, to that. So go ahead and pose it, yeah. and I, I'm super eager to tap Alan Shaw and Aaron Fu to, uh, to respond. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, basically, the issue I've been running into is there seems to be a lot of excitement uh, from, you know, faculty and the higher ups at my school. And uh, the problem is, though, just getting people to actually take action. Like I've told, I don't know how many people the deadline over and over again. Um, and they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll get to it. Um, but so, I mean, there is some enthusiasm about what I'm trying to accomplish but it seems like there's just very little action taking place. So I guess maybe I'm just not explaining it well enough or you know, there's something else you know, going on there. So Al, what advice do you have? Um, well, for our school, I mean, it, it's kind of the same, I guess, challenge because you, uh, People are very excited, like faculty can be very excited about the event that you're trying to put on, um, but it's not part of their job description uh, mm -hmm. is what I constantly get. And as a result, it's not a priority for them because they end up having a lot of stuff they have on their own plates. Uh, so for me then, um, it, it's been consistent where, you know, I, I just constantly in my calendar where I have time between, let's say, classes or during lunch, um, I'll schedule a meeting or like on my own time and then just walk in, uh, uh, schedule it with their admin or schedule it with their secretary. And as a result, I'll consistently pop up on their calendar, let's say every two weeks or every three weeks. And this also gives me kind of mini milestones um, that I need to achieve before I come and meet with them. And so let's say something we discuss uh, uh, in our meeting, um, I'll come back, let's say three weeks, well, let's say two weeks later, and then I have my own agenda that uh, of, of, I guess, um, of things that we talked about last time that you know, uh, the, the faculty member had expressed um, ideas about or uh, uh, things that the faculty would like for me to accomplish. And then I just take it upon my own time to try and solve that or uh, accomplish that and then bring it back two weeks later. And so therefore, they're kind of they're they're involved to the aspect that they're giving a lot of input. Um, mm -hmm. But it's more or less the uh, yourself and your team in the background, the students that are uh, kind of really driving forwards the the agenda, um, because I've noticed that if this at least at our school, the students aren't driving behind the project then there's a good chance that uh, the faculty that you're speaking to um, doesn't have the time nor the, uh, I guess, um, priority uh, on their own list to, to do it on themselves. Alan, that last week in particular was a pretty crazy time. You hit a lot of senior administrators. You know, you moved up from faculty to actually like the, the provost, presidential, school. Uh, to to secure commitments, uh, any advice on, um, you know, we we got a lot of questions about like what are we signing up for and is this going to cost resources and, uh, you know, can we really commit to reaching 100% of first years with innovation and entrepreneurship, uh, and how did you answer those questions? Um, so for me, uh, one of the big questions was cost. And so I was able to say that, you know, depending on how we do it, I, I brought in all, uh, I guess one of the biggest resources for me was the the, the one page that was on the, the, the UIF page that had all of the initiatives that other schools did last year for UI Fresh. And so when the provost and the dean of students asked that question, I basically showed them that page and said, hey, look, some schools spent, you know, quite a bit of money uh, to initiate their events. Other schools spent basically nothing, uh, as in some schools just, you know, uh, organized tours, which is a big step from not uh, not showing these resources on campus. So um, that was one of the bigger questions we had. Uh, when it came to the, um, how are we gonna get it done? Um, I said, you know, 
at this point, I, I kind of I kind of use the the short shortness of time uh, as well. I said, hey, we got uh, you know one day to to get these signatures. Um, we have the next three to six months to try and figure it out, uh, and we'll we'll start setting up meetings. We'll we'll work together. Um, so at this time, you know, let's let's commit. And if we can commit now, then I'm sure that if we work together, we'll find a way to make it happen later. So mm -hmm. uh, I think that was, you know, that was something that because uh, a lot of people, when when you create a goal, uh, once the goal has been written down and you've all signed up for it, it, you know, you'll somehow figure out you'll you'll have the drive to go forwards with it. If you never commit to it and you consistently ask questions um, and you keep keep on saying how I can't do it, then chances are you'll never put forth the effort to go and try and do it. Well, Alan, thank you. Thank you for recapping that. Uh, you've um, really just uh, modeled w the kind of hustling that you need to get, you know, to, to <laughs> exemplify to get the job done. So thank you. Um, yeah, all right, next I, I, I to wouldn't turn it over to Omera, if we can. In the, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to turn it. I'm going to turn it over to you, Leticia. I think we have a couple of a yes, couple of uh, colleagues. On, yeah. Yeah, some people are asking for tips for negotiation in these cases, and we have an expert here. Yeah. So can you like give us like what are what are like you know the one or two things that you would advise the fellows when they're in these situations? Well, I'm going to pivot from Tad's question uh, dealing with the big wigs at school. Uh, there's two kinds of big wigs at a university. There's the administration and their faculty, and they live in very, very different worlds. So the first tip is to understand your audience. If you're dealing with somebody who works in administration, understand what their interests um, and needs are. And if you're dealing with somebody in faculty, understand what their interests and needs are. Uh, and the two don't necessarily align. Uh, administration and faculty, live day by day, month by month, year by year in a state of constant tension <laughs> because they have different things that they want to have happen. It's really just the fundamental of the university infrastructure. So understand that from the beginning. And then irrespective of who you're speaking with, you're trying to persuade them to help you do something. Uh, understand that you need to find out what their interest is. Spend a lot of time asking questions and probing for their interests. But if at the end of the day, if you're trying to get them to take you more seriously, focus on what particularly administration, but also faculty, their interest fundamentally is uh, the consistent interest is going to be listening to the voice of students. So if you can take the position that you represent the voice of a body of students who want something, so for example, over the last five years at Stanford Law School, the students have quite clearly expressed their voice that they want experiential courses, courses that teach them how to practice law as opposed to sit in a lecture hall and learn legal knowledge. So they made their voices heard about the kinds of classes they want and the administration and faculty responded. In fact, the administration responded by bringing in experiential teachers. And so, um, Look for what they're interested in and what motivates them from even from a job description point of view and align that with what you have to offer. Uh, that what you have to offer is interesting, cutting edge, uh, and you have you represent a body of students. Figure out a way to demonstrate that you represent a body of students who you are giving voice to, and I think that will get their attention. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you, David. Um, I, I wonder if Michael uh, Brumet from Rockers is, is here in, on the call. Michael, are you there? No, he's not there. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Umera, you have Michael the had, question. My, well, well, Michael had a great question that we, I think it still deserves asking like okay what happens after you've built out that innovation space and and that maker space and you know what what is the next 10x goal to meet after establishing such a maker and innovation space and we thought that frederick given your uh, experience with this at google you might have some insights for us frederick 
Great. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I love how you framed it that it actually should be a 10x goal. I think that's the most important that you keep it um, big and bold. Um, first, I think as soon as you establish like a, a hacker designer or maker space or innovation, that's like a goal accomplished, right? So you should kind of like, you know, step back and celebrate that. <clears throat> but obviously spaces in itself, they kind of like can be very lonely, right? If you don't get the people in there doing anything you want them to actually do. So what I would do is try to invest in actually uh, the people in developing a culture which really represents the values of the space. You know, if you want to have a space which is, you know, enabling experimentation, then invest more in kind of like building out the skill set and the mindset of people and how to experiment um, effectively. Um, offering courses and, you know, sharing learnings across um, uh, the students as well and get faculty involved as well. If you want to, um, you know, encourage, um, you know, hacking, want to encourage um, um, other pieces, you know, try to find ways and actually tr um, really focus on the people and their mindset and skill sets to really um, bring that um, to life. Um, in general, I think, try to find the incentives, uh, how you can invite people to the space, right, so that they can actually find value in the space and see that this space actually supports them in achieving their own goals. So that might be, you know, their own 10x goals. So try to find incentives. Sometimes it's, you know, an interesting speaker coming in. Sometimes it's kind of like, you know, literally having like, um, you know, um, food there or kind of like something where the people get excited and gather around. Um, if it's kind of like, you know, um, some products you want to showcase or demo. Um, if you want to bring people together to share their knowledge, you know, find the incentives which get people excited and then they come actually into the space. Great, great feedback. So. Um, thank you, everyone, who um, posted uh, questions for us and for sharing your anecdotes. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to stay connected to your peers within the Fellows Program as well as to us with your accomplishments and your questions. Um, use the closed Facebook group. Uh, use the Slack channels if you haven't already joined um, all the links are um, available uh, in both places or be in touch with us and we'll add you to where you need to be. When we know um, all that you're doing, we can connect you to resources, peers who have some insights, um, ideas, um, and also, of course, uh, think about you when we're selecting our uh, fab teams. Um, we, we actually are thinking about having two meetups this year, so that means double the fabs potentially. Uh, so that's a lot of opportunity for you guys. Uh, so, you know, do amazing, well, as they said, do epic shit, and then tell us about it so that we can uh, share it with you all and, uh, um, and, and remember to spotlight you and, and um, love expertise when it comes to speaking opportunities and fab opportunities. So thanks so much for sharing that. Um, and now back to you, uh, Leticia, I believe. So to add to this, oh. uh, we didn't get to go over all of your questions, but like now it's just a copy paste job. So you take the story, you take your image, and post it on the Facebook group, and you will get many more answers. Uh, I guarantee you. So like just do that, try it um, if you haven't uh, before. Um, and we're now going to uh, move on to ask you about this experiment. So I'm, um, also, I wanted to mention, like, you know, if you, when you share your story, then, you know, you get to be on, you know, publications at your school and, and beyond. So um, that, that is um, something to, that is going to help you when you then want to advance your ideas. Um, I'm going to pass it on to Katie um, to, yeah. To get, to get some feedback. Yeah, so before Leticia officially um, wraps it up and we come to the top of the hour, we want to ask one question of you. So if we can have everybody go back to Poll Everywhere. Um, we want to know, was this virtual reunion valuable to you? Um, what did you get out of it? What did you think? Um, what if, how might we activate the fellows community in different ways? And this is an experiment that um, uh, we, we are doing. Um, so you can also then share, you know, other ways um, that, uh, that we- Dying to hear, look at your responses. responses. I'm, I'm hoping, hoping that you guys are furiously typing into Poll Everywhere because 
All right. Great. Right. Looks yeah. like it was a success. Okay. Nice job. <laughs> All right. That's, That's more like it. it. 70. <laughs> We're not uh, identifying you, so like you. No pressure. We're just watching it. We're recording for the letter. So, you know, um, great. So, <laughs> yeah. So let's move on to the next question, which is. You know, what if, what, what could we do? You know, what if we could do this to support you? So, you know, just answer anything that, you know, you think it would be valuable for us to, for the program to support you. Um, so let's think about that for, for a minute. So how can the program support you and use the what if mentalities? Like, you know, what if, we all went on a cruise ship around the world. Yes. And, you know, learned from all the different ecosystems. Yes, uh, and. Our... Yes. Yes. A what? <laughs> a summer vacation a at University of Virgin Islands and help those fellows develop their ecosystem. We had an annual meetup every month. <laughs> Someone liked the cruise, cruise ship idea. Actually, Frederick and I were on an entrepreneurship uh, down the coast of Patagonia, and we did the design process one port at a time. It was send it. It was pretty amazing. So UIS was, University. Yeah. I've heard that before. Uh, yes. <laughs> no one's mentioned to buy a big VW bus and drive around the country yet. Maybe I should do that. <laughs> Okay. Lori, we can uh, get a juicy van in camp. Yeah. Great. So let's uh, skip to the very last question. Um, and great, lots of great ideas. Thank you for, for sharing. And we'll certainly consider <laughs> you with our budget. Uh, mini coaching jerks. group. <laughs> like the crazy to the very practical, which is great, right? Um, then uh, I'm going to skip over this one and go to this one, which is um, the goal was just to be able to make a question that had an image. Uh, <laughs> no, but, but basically, right, so you, got, you guessed it. You just like click on what, did you do the survey? You know, the survey, that one that we sent you? <laughs> Someone is clicking on the cat drone, uh, which I don't know what that represents. But I'm sure it's kind of like, okay, someone's trying to put a nose on the cat drone. Uh, but, you know, you guys have done pretty well. You know, the couple of you who are not in the yes camp, you know, go and do the survey. We really love your feedback because that's what keeps us you know, improving, right, Frederick? You know, feedbacks are important, yeah? Because, so, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, you guys are having too much fun with the cat. Um, yeah. So, any, as, as people continue answering, any last words from the East Coast? Uh, just a shout out to uh, Howard University and our colleagues, um, Atia Lanier and Sarah Jones here at the uh, at Howard, um, fellows from, let's see, 2014 and, and 2015, shaking it up here, working with Pharrell Williams and uh, doing all kinds of crazy things here. Um, so thank you for hosting us. Great, awesome. Um, yeah, and just to, to end, I think we're just going to, it's time to fly. We want you to go back to the amazing things that you're doing, perhaps you have a class, you know, well, you know, the life of a student. Um, so just wanted to share one last thing with you, if I can find the browser. Here we go. Let's, um, so yeah, and I don't know if some people are calling, um, so, but we're recording.
Leticia, we can't hear you. Okay. Okay. We'll, we'll okay. use that. We'll Okay, sorry. Yeah, when you play the video, then you know it's it's muted. But like, yeah, hope you enjoyed that that short video. I'll do a better job of editing, and we'll post it. Um, I am am I muted, or can you guys hear me? We can hear you. Great. Okay. So I think we're like right on time. Maybe like we have like two minutes to spare. Um, so you can go back and do amazing things. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone who submitted. And really, copy paste. You'll get lots and lots of answers. Sorry, we didn't get time to get to all of you. You guys had so many interesting things that, uh, yeah. But thank you. Thank you so thank much. You thank you. Thank you, everyone. Love you guys. Bye. Bye bye. Everyone.